Hi guys, welcome to CounterPoints, my name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Kadia Stance from Hammer and Bolter. We're doing this to correct some lore and technical issues, but also to comply with a Games Workshop request that we take down some of our less transformative reactions. But let's break down something else before we get into the content. Today, I'm ecstatic to be breaking down the FlexiSpot Standing Electric Desk. The heartbeat of many professionals and creators is their office, and the heartbeat of that office is their desk. Many people suffer with kitchen tables, hand-me-downs, and cheap, wobbly discount furniture, but they shouldn't. You should take care of yourself, and there's no better way to do that than with the FlexiSpot Standing Electric Desk. I've been using it for a bit now, and it will dutifully serve all your needs and has the strength and features to do all you ask of it. If you need to get the blood flowing and deliver a serious speech, there's a setting for that. If you need to buckle down and knock out some work, there's a setting for that. If you need to chill and play some video games or watch your favorite show, there's a setting for that. And if you need to solder, sand, assemble, or paint your crafting project, buy a good crafting mat, throw it on top, and this desk can take a beating and not flinch an inch. Invest in your health, invest in your posture, invest in your office, and invest in yourself. Check out the links in the description to take advantage of Sears discounts. You deserve it. Harlan, with me. Sir. <clears throat> Keep this one alive. Get him back to command to deliver my reply. <gasps> Consider it done, sir. Cadia stands, Sergeant. Cadia stands, sir. You, move those corpses. Form a barricade. You want to make this easy for them? Cadia stands. Forgive me. I thought, well, wasn't your whole planet destroyed? It was. The arch enemy came with overwhelming force and vile sorcery and broke our world to pieces. They destroyed the ground we walked on. But Cadia is more than that. Cadia is us. Cadia is everywhere now. But I'm just a messenger. Everyone here stands. But you I did what any of us would do. What he would have done for me.
Cadia was a fortress world outside of the Eye of Terror, and its people are some of the fiercest mortal warriors in the Imperium. As such, they are the exemplars of what the Imperial Guard can be and are held up as a standard to which all other regiments aspire. Cadia's strategic location allowed it to be a hub of anti-chaos activity and saw it being reinforced into a series of giant kill boxes protected against orbital bombardment by void shields. Anyone trying to take the planet would have to move from slaughter to slaughter, slowly prying the defenders out of their bunkers, trenches, and gun emplacements. The Cadian population was trained since youth to be warriors, with every able-bodied Cadian serving in the White Shields. The White Shields were a youth training program, creating adolescent warriors preparing for service in defense of the Imperium and their world. Cadia was also laced with Blackstone pylons. These were remnants of Necron technology that helped suppress the Eye of Terror and psychic energy. As a result, the planet and pylons were the target of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade. The War Master of Chaos's plans were frustrated by a valiant defense, and instead of slinking away, he threw a Blackstone fortress through the world, shattering it. Imperial troops were still fighting as they were vented into the void, leading to the saying, the planet broke before the guard did, and Cadia stands. Cadians are now a people without a planet, dedicated to spreading their warrior ethos to the stars. Which they're going to need to face the monstrous hive mind race known as the Tyranids. A powerful sentience drives a variety of fierce bug-like forms that strip the biomass from planets before moving to their next target. The most common and numerous of these forms are the Termagants and Hormigants, smaller swarm creatures that count on numbers, claws, and close-range bioweapons to bring down their prey, leaving them as a Tyranid warrior which is known as a Synapse creature. While powerful and lethal on their own, they act as a psychic relay for the hive mind. Killing synapse creatures can reduce the connection of non-synapse forms, making them more animalistic and likely to disengage from a battle. As a result, elite forces like the Death Watch are known to target synapse creatures specifically to more efficiently kill Tyranid swarms. Next, we see gargoyles, flying monsters, and a gene stealer, a reconnaissance and infiltration form that follows a similar life cycle of corruption and reproduction to the xenomorph species. A ripper swarm tears a guardsman apart, and he is given the Emperor's mercy as they burrow into his flesh. Finally, we get to see a Carnifex in all its horrible glory. Carnifex are walking tanks capable of taking a punishing amount of damage and dealing it in turn. The Carnifex uses its crushing claws and scything talons to cut through the guard and vomits bioplasma onto hapless guardsmen. What needs to be remarked, though, is the tenacity of the Cadians in response. They have every reason in the world to break, to flee. They are being overrun by horrible human-sized and larger bugs, ripping, tearing, and burning their friends to death in some of the most horrible ways imaginable, and yet they stand and fight. It is because they know they have to. To flee is to die in just as horrible ways, but also to condemn their brothers and sisters in arms and to condemn the Imperium itself. Following the self-sacrificial logic, they would rather pull the corpses of their friends from the battlefield and take their post, fighting to their last lasgun cell and breath. There is a certainty and bravery here that is both admirable and reflective of the best of the human spirit in war. Bravery, loyalty, endurance, and sacrifice up to and including death. stands here.
The Cassadorian Seventh are holding to the west. As are the Mirror Knights. Well, do you have a reply? Yes, sir. What did she say? Will the Cadian lines hold? Well, they did lose their own world, after all. <laughs> she says they'll stand. Is there a difference? Yes. There's a difference. Cadia is all of us now. Cadia stands. Seeing the Cadian's consistent sacrifice in culture, the messenger rallies. Still terrified, he begins cutting down Hormagons, even saving the Cadian sergeant's life. I love the way the Lasgun is portrayed in this episode, as it is often described as a flashlight, but in novels is described as having a power similar to a modern battle rifle. Lasguns pop a six-inch wide wound cavity into their targets by cooking flesh into an eruption of blood viscera and cooked muscle. 762 by 51 NATO rounds are known for a similar kind of damage and have been even known to snap bones amputating their targets. The Cadian sergeant returns the favor and sacrifices herself to save the messenger and message that the Cadians will hold and still stand. Some Mordian iron guards sneer at the sentiment, but the messenger has a newfound understanding of Cadian valor and his own ability to follow their example. Which brings us to the end for now. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know whenever fresh content drops. Comment down below for the comment gods. Join the Discord if you want to hang out with fellow nerds. And check out the politics channels in the description if you're into debates or essays. Get your breakfast from Magic Spoon, your skincare from Geology, get your wallet from Hawkins & Company, get your chair from Ewan Racing, get your desk from Flexi Spot, and get your third-party bits from Libra De Monica, and get your minis painted by Mastermind Models and Miniatures. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Until the end.